Welcome back to another episode of Gardening with Ryan. I actually came out here to shoot an episode this morning, but it was raining. And I was like, well, the rain took my job. But here we are. In this one, we're going to be checking things out. And I'm going to be going on a little bit of a rant about garbage software. So, first, we're going to see if everything is adequately watered already from... So, let's check this one. Look how much better that is. That was pretty much dead, and we were hoping that there would be life in that pot when we started, folks. And then, there... Look how alive that is. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's... See, I kind of want to water in there just because... Well, it's probably pretty wet, to be honest. Yeah, we'll water a little bit. So... I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant about garbage software. Specifically, Linux and Ubuntu. Now, I've been using Linux for a long time. I'm 22 now. I started using it when I was maybe like 13 or 14. So... I've been using it for a while. And, like most people, my first distribution was Ubuntu. And it was awesome. You know, you just downloaded your disk image, you made your DVD, because at the time you were more likely to make a DVD image than a USB. You installed it, you had all your cool software, you were like, whoa, all the drivers are just in the kernel. You don't have to, like, you don't plug it in and have, like, a terrible resolution and, like, no internet connection. It just works. Yeah. And, you know, the cool stuff. And then, I'm sure those of you that have been following Ubuntu for a while remember the Amazon issue. Ubuntu put into its Unity desktop environment thing. Well, that was a controversy in and of itself, but whatever. That, that uh, desktop environments are not the point here. Um, that, that's a different discussion. Look, my, my little succulent there is barely alive. So we're just gonna kind of do a spray down of everything. Look how that succulent back there is kind of yellowish, which makes me inclined to water even though it rained. But, like I said, we're not talking about desktop environments here, but they built into the OS in Unity, so I guess we are talking about desktop environments because in the default Ubuntu download, there was some Amazon search crap. I really don't know the technical details of how it worked, nor did I care. It just pissed me off at the time, and it pissed everyone else off because that was the exact reason that we were not using Windows, right? Like, that, that's, that, that, that was the reason that we uninstalled Windows or installed Linux. Well, I'm sure there, there are other reasons as well, not just to be, like, privacy geeks. But... That, that, it, that made, like, pretty much everyone upset, and people were like, this is stupid, and Canonical had to get rid of it because they knew they were done otherwise, and then time went on. Well... I think what happened with Ubuntu is kind of like a, uh, like the boiling frog analogy. 
because, okay, so to give some context here, I've got a Surface Pro 2 that I inherited. And I love the thing. It's so nifty. I, I thought I could never get behind the tablet meme. See, I, I always saw like tablet computers and I'm like, just use the laptop, just use the desktop. I can't imagine using something non-stationary. To me, it was like, well, there's phones and then there's stationary computers. But this thing folds out to a real stationary laptop and back to a tablet and integrates with the pen and stuff so nicely. Anyway, I was like, okay, there's a lot of fancy stuff happening here with this detachable keyboard and the pen. I wonder how Linux is with this. And I remember there was, when I did a little research, there was a custom Linux kernel for a lot of Surface models. So I was like, not looking good. Because when you need a custom kernel, it's probably going to be a lot of work. But in this case, uh, I found on Reddit that you did not need any special kernels or anything. And just using Ubuntu 20.04, the live image of 20.04.02, the most recent, showed me that Pretty much everything just worked out of the box. Not pretty much everything. Everything that I could see just worked out of the box. Really, like, perfectly. As far as I could tell, which was nice. However, Ubuntu. I was prompted by so much garbage. Now, I run Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, LTS is a server OS on my server already, but you don't see this stuff when you're running it on a server OS. I was prompted with so much crap, like sign into Canonical 2, partner with Microsoft 2, and even when I went to download the disk image for the uh, for Ubuntu, all I got was their corporate crap, and it took me a while to find a place to download the uh, desktop OS. And this is not a video about snaps or system D or any controversial software decision. I think the line between garbage software and not garbage software are just, are just garbage and not garbage in the, like the garbage we don't want and the garbage we don't want is not a complicated or difficult line. And with all this, oh, sign in, oh, sign in for live patch, sign in for this, yeah. and I don't know much about the whole snap debate, nor do I really care as long as my stuff works, but with Canonical, just, it doesn't really seem properly, like, it seems like Canonical is in this, it's, it's not peer-to-peer -peer in any sense, Neither are most repository systems, I guess, but there's some system where Canonical can, it's like closed on the part of Canonical and only they can see some of the magic. But here's where I'm going into an opinion rant. And if you disagree with any of this, that's fine. That's totally cool. This is literally just my unprofessional opinion. But I don't, the part of Linux being free and open source that's cool to me is the fact that I can see the source code and that I can distribute it. None of the whole ethical free software movement stuff, I've never been able to really get into that. And I don't think there's anything morally wrong with proprietary software. I mean, there, I mean, it might not. There might be. I just don't care. It's never been a, a thought of mine, and I really hate. Okay, I don't want to say hate, but I don't want to publish anything, or have to worry about the GPL, because needing to keep things. At nice and free by the FSF's foundations is an annoying hindrance that I don't want to have to deal with. I sh I'm looking for more of a public domain type 
way of computing and way of I mean I, I I'm looking for an app for a license for when I publish stuff that's more public domainy. I think the BSD license would be BSD type licenses would be appropriate, but I think even those you have to put some disclaimer in. And I really want to find some software license that is as permissive as can get. Sell it, rebrand it, claim it as your own, and hopefully find some OS that is that permissive, because that'd be kind of cool. Because now that I realize that in the Linux kernel are all the good drivers for, uh, you know, the Surface tablet, I don't need Ubuntu or Canonical. I, I, I just went with Ubuntu because, you know, they have a pretty recent kernel, and I figured their version of GNOME was likely to play nice with the touchscreen, and if I needed fancy drivers, Ubuntu would search the internet for me or whatever, but... Now I need to pick an actual OS to use. And I, I know I'm not going to find a Linux distro not licensed with the GPL because Linux kernel, but um, I'm thinking about um, adopting BSD as a secondary OS, potentially. Or just something. Or, I guess I'm just looking, even if I stick with just using Linux as a desktop OS, depends on how, on, on how, like, usable desktop BSD actually is, because people say it's good, but I don't know if it's a meme or not. We'll find out. But if it's actually, like, a viable daily computing solution... That'd be cool. I know open SSH comes from there. If any of you nerds have an OS I need to try, just tell me. See, I I, I don't see much appeal behind the whole like Arch Gen 2 OS's because like yeah I can figure it out but like I actually have things that I need to do on my computer and like I'm gonna ask you users of it and if you can say yes then maybe my maybe I'm wrong and I need to get on the meme train but can you honestly say yeah, I can say that in five years, this machine's still going to be up. If I need it to be. Because I need that kind of stability. I don't care if I'm running some old kernel or whatever. Like, it, it does not matter to me. At all. When does it really ever actually matter? Other than, like, gaming. Okay, I know there are a lot of cases where it actually matters other than gaming. Don't, like, flame me for that one. I was just kind of concerned by how this was starting to look kind of dry and brown, like just back here. Like, I think I need to start watering every day because it's been raining, but I don't think that's enough. Look at all these blue flowers. Ain't that gorgeous? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS is filled with trash, and the line between trash and not trash is really, really simple to, to draw. As soon as you see, oh, opt-in, oh, send data about, uh, like, 
come on, I, Canonical knows where the line between trash and not trash is now, and, like, they're not putting as much emphasis on their own desktop OS anymore, so... Maybe it's time to take the Debian pill and just run, like, Debian 10 on... as, like, a desktop OS... I don't know. See, I was just gonna actually install Ubuntu on the freaking Surface, but it pissed me off enough. All the, uh, the crap about all, all the, uh, like, okay. I have options here. Solus is kind of cool. I used it for a while. It was fun. It was neat. I could also use, um... An Ubuntu community derivative. I could also use Linux Mint. But Linux Mint has snaps turned off, which is fine. However, I feel like... Okay, I'm not a fan of the whole snap thing. But th the fact is that Ubuntu is, like, integrating it into their ecosystem. So if I'm going to use the ecosystem... I can't fight, I can't fight around it forever. <laughs> you know? Interestingly, in the surface, the, uh... I don't think I needed any proprietary Wi-Fi driver, did I? If I actually don't, I will install some sort of, like, meme distro on there, like... Crisquel or something. Like, to just go, like, full meme. Alright. That's enough water. And the grass got watered in the rain today. There's new grass growth over here. That needs plenty of water to stay alive. See that? Beautiful. Our goal of making things greener is playing out pretty well. Let's make sure we water in here. We can't forget about these guys. Look how brown that area still is. It's just... I want to turn it green. You know? I ordered roadside assistance because I locked my vehicle keys inside of my vehicle. And I've been filming this whole time. I really hope that um, calls and texts make it through phone, or make it through filming. Just in case, and because we're done anyway, and because it's getting dark, we'll close this one out. Thank you for watching, as always. And. Surprise is coming soon. I, lo I love that dog. I don't even know what that dog looks like. I've never seen the dog. I've just been greeted by the dog every time I've come home 
for years. And I take, I mean, it's the same sound every time, so I take it as a friendly greeting now. Anyway, thank you. And thank you for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed, because it helps me, because it makes those YouTube algorithm points spin. Peace.